All right, so uh, to get started, do you mind uh, mind saying your name and, uh, uh, I guess, job descript- or job title? Yeah, I am. Uh, my name is Alex Flock, and I am a sales associate for the Philadelphia 76ers, New Jersey Devils, Harris Blitzer Sports, and other same. So I guess to get started, um, the first thing would be, like, I guess, a job description, um, kind of overall generic, what, 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 you, what you do, basically. Sure. So uh, basically, my job is to sell. Um, I sell full menu for uh, both the Philadelphia 76ers and the New Jersey Devils. However, um, I am primarily focused on the Philadelphia 76ers. That is, uh, that's where my team is focused. So okay. a lot of uh, client services, like client uh, retention type stuff, uh, a lot of new buyer prospecting, um, full menu selling, things of that nature. Okay. Um, what college did you attend and uh, what was your, your major? Uh, I went to U- the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill and I double majored in exercise and sports science with a focus in sports management and U.S. history. So with your, with your position in the sales office, is that a, uh, a typical kind of entry level job? Um, for sales, yeah. For sales? Yep. Um, mm-hmm. so how did, how did you kind of like get this opportunity to get in? I, so I, uh, inquired about it. Um, I saw that, um, at the time, uh, so our current vice president of ticket sales and service for the 76ers, um, he, at the time, uh, when he posted it, um, which was back in, uh, April of 2017, um, he was the senior director of uh, Inside Sales with the uh, 76ers. Um, he made a post that they were looking uh, for new uh, sales associates or new talent, as they say. Um, I decided to inquire about it. I was uh, set up on a uh, phone call with uh, who would become my manager. Um, my manager has since left. Um, and uh, over the next couple of months, we had uh, kind of gone back and forth and getting to know each other. One thing kind of led to another, and uh, I was fortunate enough to, uh, to get a position. Awesome. Um, so kind of going back to college and, you know, getting your foot in the door, would you say networking is, you know, more important than things like GPA and, and, and such? Yeah, it's uh, networking is, is the single most important thing that uh, – that you can be able to do, being able to forge, uh, you know, well-constructed relationships, uh, you know, is, is kind of the axiom of, of professional sports and being able to, uh, to be successful. Okay. I, uh, I mean, I assume you've been a huge sports fan your whole life, but when did you kind of figure out that the sports industry was where you wanted to, the direction you wanted to head with your career? Um, you know, I, I think you kind of touched on it. I think it's the fact that, you know, it's, I've been around it my whole life. It's, I wouldn't say it's all I know, but uh, it's, uh, you know, I know a lot about it and I love to continue learning more about it. Um, and I think, you know, being around uh, people who have also been around sports and have such a passion for it, I think it's the best opportunity, um, you know, to be able to continue that, uh, that journey. Yeah, no, that's awesome. That's kind of where I'm at right now, you know, growing mm-hmm. up playing sports and stuff. But uh... yeah. So, like, what advice would you be able to give somebody in, in a sports management program? Sure. Um, you know, even if you don't think, uh, like, sales is for you, um, I would recommend, uh, like, giving it a try because the worst thing that you can do is figure out that it's not for you. Um, you know, it's going to be one – it's going to be an instance where you don't want to, you know, turn – back uh, the clock like later on in life and know that you're not working in sports and think that maybe I should have given uh, you know sales a try might have been able to make a career out of it um, you know whether or not I end up doing sales long term I'm not worried about it I'm just kind of glad that I gave it a go because I, I learned that I, I could be successful at it okay I um like when 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 you within your I guess my next question leading into my next question about like a typical day at work, do you have like a lot of face to face interaction or is it a lot of phone calls um, behind the desk? Like what is it, what does it consist of? 
going to be a lot of desk work uh, in the office. Um, I think most most of my face to face interactions come with either off site appointments, which I, I haven't made too many of those, or um, just in game, like when you have prospects out or you know when you're visiting clients, things of that nature. Um, you definitely have to have proficiency and comfort in being able to you know work face to face. Um, I would I wouldn't say that the job is really for you if you're not comfortable being, uh, you know, around people, uh, things of that nature. Okay. Um, I guess kind of along with that, I was wondering, uh, like, I know you haven't been, been in the inter- industry long and at your job, but like with the advancements in technology and stuff and how teams kind of have to have a social media presence and stuff like that, like how has that kind of changed the industry? Like, well, guess, what do you mean a little bit? Like, I guess going back to, like, I know, like, when the, when TVs came out and, like, it changed the way, like, everyone viewed and the numbers and stuff, like, with the way promotions work and, I guess, with the internet and stuff, has it just sure. been, you know, the, the sport, I guess, NBA itself, has it been able to, you know, increase its global following and stuff like sure. that, of that nature? I, I think that's actually a, a really interesting question, um, now that I understand it, um, I think social media in general um, has just completely changed the way professional sports um, is are viewed. Um, basketball, for one, is an extraordinarily global sport and has an extreme following in Asia and a following that is continuing to grow more and more in Europe. Um, and social media has done one of two things. It's not only um, expanded um, that reach um, you know, abroad, But at the same time, uh, I think I'd be reminisced to say that it's also kind of changed the way that, uh, you know, um, you know, people view sports like people don't quite perhaps feel the need to, you know, go and watch a game anymore uh, because they can watch it in the comfort of their own home. So to an extent, from a sales perspective, you know, we uh, we have to do a little bit more competing with, uh, you know, from our angle, like the entertainment value that we can offer. Um, whereas, you know, like somebody else, you know, might prefer to sit on their couch for free and watch the game, um, you know, in HD or something like that. So kind of have to battle that as well. And I think social media has definitely played a role in that. Um, but at the same time, it's also, uh, increased the, uh, um, the games, you know, the game and, uh, how it's become global things of that nature oh absolutely and like especially how players act with how they can be like followed around like kind of their every movement and tweeting and the ability to say whatever they feel or you know i know espn's been having problems with like their viewers because you can go on instagram and catch all like the main highlights so like why would you watch an hour show when you can just you know spend 30 seconds looking at it um i guess so for my next my next question is um what are like some of the, the hardships or challenges like day to day that you can face in your in your position? Um, I think that's another really good question. I think it's the fact that uh, you know some people just could give uh, excuse my language two shits about what you have to say. Um, so a lot of it is you know battling uh, a lot of the difficulties. Um, you know, come with the job description, which is battling objections. You're going to have a lot of people who um, you know give you. Um, you know, like reasons that you'll find really stupid, like for, for why they might not want something. Um, but at the end of the day, it's all kind of how you frame it. Um, going off of that, I think the, the biggest thing that I've struggled with is just, is something that everybody kind of struggles with. And it's, uh, that, you know, uh, sometimes people are just really hard to reach, especially people with, you know, who are like presidents of companies, CEOs of companies, like people that you want to talk to because they, you know, have money and disposable income that, and potentially a business need for like sports. Um, so obviously like those people are really hard to reach and that can kind of put a dent in like your ability to, uh, to make a connection and, uh, you know, make a, an effective one at that. Okay. Okay. Um, so I guess going on with that and dealing with all those obstacles you have to overcome, uh, what is like if you have one a, a long term plan or kind of an ideal dream job within the industry? I'm sorry, can you repeat that one more time? Um, 
So do you have like uh, a long-term plan or an ideal job that you're reaching for within the industry? Um, yeah, so my ultimate goal, um, I'd like to be a professional mascot if, uh, if the opportunity presented itself. Um, ultimately, my, my goal is to hopefully get on the sports operations side of things. Um, so I do have certification as a, uh, a basketball scout, um, so I'd like to kind of get into basketball operations if I could. Um, likewise, I, you know, I'm just kind of continuing to go with the flow and, you know, see, uh, see where the, uh, the opportunities kind of lie for me. Obviously I'm doing this right now and, uh, you know, uh, trying to make sure that, you know, I'm at least working hard so that way I can get a good recommendation letter when, uh, when I ultimately kind of make my transition wherever that may be. Okay. Um, so Technically, right now I'm in the uh, the business school, but I'm taking this class to decide if I want to um, switch majors. And I was just wondering, is it is it difficult uh, to kind of get your foot into the door and and get a job within for like a professional team without having a sports management degree? No, not at all. Not so at all. It kind of goes back to networking and stuff. Yeah, it, it's all about networking. Again, um, you know, it's uh, it's it's one of those things where again you spoke to it like it's all going to be about the connections but you know if you have a diverse background you know it's it's not really going to matter uh, you know sports management is, is sports management like you know it's it's not going to be the like end all be all of you know who they hire like if you're in the business school that's great like there's you're in business operations like it makes perfect sense mm -hmm. um likewise if you know, if you're a science major, or if, you know, whatever, like, if, you, if you're if you passionate about it, or you, like, make a good pitch on yourself, and bet on yourself, um, you know, you will succeed, and, you know, they're not gonna, they're not gonna bat an eye at what you study. Okay, that's, that's good to know, but, um, is it, is it, I know, you know, with, with sales positions, uh, like, kind of moving up from, from where you're at, like, the process of, of promotion, and kind of getting to that, that goal, uh, goal job, like how how would that work? Um, in terms of like me trying to get a promotion. Yeah, is it you know internally, externally? What 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 would? Yeah, so it, it would be both. Um, so um, I I won't really go into what my plans are right now, just because I'm still trying to figure them out. But yeah, I think uh, number one, uh, the cool thing um, about at least the organization is that when they have an opening uh, at the next level, um, we're the first people to know, um, which is cool, uh, before they post it, like on Teamwork Online or another source, um, which kind of says a lot that they uh, that they hope that somebody can step up and, you know, be hired, be uh, promoted internally. Um, likewise, you know, we're always uh, – on teamwork online, like looking up new opportunities if something opens up, and uh, if um, you know if something opens up, then uh, it's good to kind of let your supervisor or whoever know, um, so that way if they have a connection down there, they can help make it for you, um, which is always helpful because again, that kind of speaks again to uh, to networking and uh, you know being able to forge those connections. Okay, and, and I guess kind of along with that and getting a, a position, um, did you do any, any internships while you were in college, sports-related? Yeah, I, uh, I interned for the, uh, the Pittsburgh Pirates and Human Resources. I interned with the uh, uh, with Ripken Baseball in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee as a baseball operations assistant, uh, and then I worked as a game operations assistant and a mascot for the Winston-Salem Dash outside of college. Okay. And, you know, speaking of college, uh, if you could go back and, and tell yourself a piece of advice, would, would you have to, anything to give or, or do you think you did it right the first time around? Um, I'd, uh, I'd say never leave, um, <laughs> because as soon as you leave, you'll miss it. Um, so just enjoy the I, moment. Yeah. In, enjoy the moment. Um, it's funny. The, uh, the Sixers have a saying, the, the mantra, um, this year, um, has all been about um, uh, the mantra has all been about uh, welcome to the moment, um, which is a really cool kind of thing. Obviously, the team has sucked for a really long time, and now we're we're good. We're actually uh, an Eastern Conference contender. So, um, yeah, I'd say stay in the moment. Um, 
Trust the process. I, trust the process for sure. Um, that's a huge one. Um, but I think it's definitely true. I mean, like, you know, it's everything's kind of a work in progress. And if you, uh, you know, stick to it and, you know, continue to practice and, you know, eventually you'll, you'll find your way. Um, I had a really unique opportunity, you know, being a mascot in college. And I don't, there are very few people who actually get that opportunity. Um, so I'd say that just doing that alone, um, I'd say I, I did college right the first time. Yeah, um, that sounds awesome. But I, uh, I, I itched to do it all over again. And I would definitely uh, savor the moment while you're there. Um, okay, so does your job come with any kind of cool perks that, you know, you know, sit and get in tickets to games or, or such? So um, I do, um, you know, uh, I'm very lucky to be able to work every single game. Um, you know, I think that just allows me to be around basketball a ton, which is great. Um, and I think, uh, you know, kind of like, uh, in general, uh, you know, just being able to say I'm around some of the brightest minds in uh, professional sports is obviously great. Um, and, uh, I think, uh, in general, you know, every once in a while we'll have contests where they'll be, uh, giving away, like, some cool stuff, like some swag or, you know, like some, uh, some Sixers gear or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, every once in a while, like, we'll do something really cool like that. Um, I, we have contests all the time, you know, to, uh, to keep people motivated. Um, and, uh, I, w I actually won a contest back in, uh, late November, early December, um, and I actually won, uh, courtside seats to, uh, the game against the Phoenix Suns, um, to, and got to sit with, uh, our chief revenue officer, so, um, I got to sit row one, uh, feet on the floor, which was incredible. I've never done anything like that before, so, um, that was a really cool perk, and, uh, you know, I think they, uh, they definitely value the, uh, the hard work, and, uh, yeah, no, that that sounds sick. I know um, your brother Mitchell was was he mentioned to me that you were able to work with uh, Lavar Ball at some point. Did you get yeah, so, did you get um, to meet I, him or anything? Yeah, I did get to meet him. Um, I uh, so basically what happened was um, the show Ball and the Family, the uh, the production company, uh, the producer for the show, um, called the Seventy uh, Sixer sales line. I was the uh, the lucky phone that got to pick it up, yeah. and uh, the guy said. Um, I, uh, you know, did my standard intro, like, how can I help you? And, uh, the guy basically said, yeah, we're looking for a suite for the, uh, the Lakers game. I went through my spiel. I said, like, great. Like, we have some good locations available. Um, is this going to be for business, family? Like, what's, uh, what's kind of the vibe? And he, uh, he said, like, oh, I'm the producer of a show. It's called Ball and the Family. Uh, we were looking to, uh, to get a suite for the game. And I said, Oh, so the family's going to be there. And his immediate reply was yes. And I freaked out on the inside. I kept my composure on the outside. And I said, great. I would go at this location and this food and beverage package. It'll be this much money. How do you want to do this? And the uh, guy was pretty straightforward. Uh, he said, great. I need to give this information to uh, our lead um, producer. Um He'll, uh, I'll keep your number and he will call you, uh, as soon as he, uh, he's ready. I said, great. I will, uh, go ahead and try and, uh, communicate that to my VP so that way we can get the location I, I think will work held. Um, I got a call back the next morning. Very nice guy, um, gave me the card and, uh, I got the suite for him and then I, helped communicate with them and the Wells Fargo Center where the Sixers play, um, just to make sure, uh, you know, to uh, uh, make sure that everything was taken care of and that they had uh, an excellent experience and would want to come back. And I got a very nice email from the, uh, the head producer uh, two days after the game, uh, thanking me very much and uh, saying that they hope they can come back for another game soon. Yeah, see, that's that's a pretty awesome experience, you know, just yeah, stuff if like it, that. And if at all... Interact if at all you. else, if I uh, if I don't get to uh, you know continue in this industry, I can at least say that I succeeded and I sold uh, Lamar Ball. So yeah. I can always have that in my back pocket. And uh, I did. First of all, he is an extraordinarily nice individual. Really? Um, I mean, he's gonna, yeah, he's he, a he's a he's a character. He's going to be around he's for a, a long time. He's definitely a character. Um, but I uh, I had a really nice conversation with him when I met him uh, at the game. I told him. 
Um, I said, first off, um, you know, like, if you guys need anything, please let me know. The producer has my cell phone number. I'll be here as quick as possible. Like, I want to make sure you guys have the best night here. Like, I want to make sure nothing's taken or everything's taken care of. So, you know, certainly feel free to reach out to me at any time. And um, he just came across as very genuine, very appreciative of everything. Um, his wife, Tina, was there. Um, uh, Mello and Jello were there. Um, obviously, Lonzo was uh, was downstairs or down on the floor playing. Uh, and then they had uh, some other family friends and big ball of brand representatives there. So, um, it was a really cool experience. Um, he was extraordinarily friendly, um, very genuine. Um, you know, definitely made a, a conscientious effort to let people know that everything was appreciated. And um, you know, he, uh, I think he really makes a, a strong impression uh, when people actually take the time to get to know him. Yeah, that sounds that sounds awesome. I remember when when Mitchell told me about all of that, I was cracking up. That sounds so cool. Yeah, but, I. Um, uh, yeah, he was very nice. I actually got to take a picture with him as well. He's very cool about it, so uh, got to uh, got to make sure that was cool. Uh, I've seen little Vicky uh, at a couple games as well. Um, he's a big Sixers fan. He's from the area. Um, very nice guy as well. I've gotten to meet him once. No no pictures, but um, very nice guy. And uh, I met Carson Wentz in passing uh, at this past Saturday's game. So. Uh, Lots of people are always rolling through. Um, you know, the team is really hot right now. It's a it's a hot ticket. People are always looking to come out. Yeah, it probably helps that the uh, Eagles won the Super Bowl because the uh, just the, in uh, general with like people uh, being you know wanting to the support are, their teams in the city. You know. Yeah the uh, the fans are crazy. Um, they are gung ho about their teams. Um, likewise, uh, you know. I think uh, the Eagles winning just made them hop on the Sixers bandwagon a little bit more. Um, but at the same time, I think uh, um, they're, they they saw Carson and uh, they know he's uh, he's their savior. <laughs> all right. Well, I got just like two or three more questions. But um, sure. I guess speaking of all these different teams, uh, do you have an ideal team you would want to work for? Kind of a favorite team? Uh, any any you sport? Know, Probably not really, um, you know, as long as it's a, you know, a good opportunity, it's, I think, all I really care about. Um, if I had to give advice, I'd probably say, don't work for your favorite team. Um, you know, that might that might change for me, um, but I think it's, it's hard to work for your favorite team when, uh, you know, especially if they're losing. Or like when uh, you, do you associate it with work? Like, yeah, yeah. Like my and favorite team is the Panthers, and if I start working with them, and you know, everyone kind of dreads going to work. Do you kind of right? Right. I think it's that, and then uh, you know, I think it's also the fact that you know most of your arguments or you know, like evidence will be emotionally driven. Um, whereas if uh, Very true. yeah, if um, you know, you're not as emotionally attached to the team. Um, you know, I think it kind of puts you in a, a better mindset to, uh, you know, focus more on what benefits um, actually are um, versus, like, how much you like something. Okay. And then for, for my, my final question is uh, kind of what part of the industry should I consider, you know, pursuing what, like, direction or avenue because of, uh, like, potential future growth or just, like, a good place to start? Sure. So, like, what are you interested in getting involved in? Um, probably, honestly, sales sounds sounds like a ideal spot. Or, you know, everyone dreams of being, you know, if you love sports, like, a, you know, general manager, coach, talent yeah. scout, and stuff like that. But I know the how difficult that can be. But you know, anywhere from marketing or yeah. being on a team, social media, that all those positions sound sound like like they would fit me. So. I think you. I think you pretty much answered the question. Then, um, you know, I think uh, at the end of the day, it kind of boils down to, uh, you know, um, you know, trying uh, trying to steer toward what your ultimate end game is. Um, you know, I think at the end of the day, um, it's going to be one of those things where everyone kind of needs to learn how to sell. Um, knowing how to sell is a really invaluable skill. Um, it, you know, selling is just something that has 
been going on forever and it's just not going to die. So knowing how to sell is huge. Even if you find out it's not for you, um, it's great to have that experience. Um, and especially if you want to do like marketing or like, um, you know, sponsorship or, you know, um, things of that nature, like selling is, um, you know, the best starting point that you can, uh, you can find. Oh, um, absolutely. I mean, you got to yeah. kind of sell yourself too, to a certain extent, yeah. like in an interview, you know, you got to yeah. show why you would in be sports, good you're, in position. You're always selling yourself as well. Um, you're always kind of being, uh, being watched under the microscope, especially, uh, in, in my role, um, because it's not intended to be a permanent role. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely important to be uh, conscientious of. Alrighty, man. Well, that was a huge help. Really interesting. I uh, learned a lot of, a lot of cool stuff. So thank you for, for your time. For sure. Anything else I can help out with? Um, how's, uh, how's Markel's shot looking? Is it oh, I, <laughs> I, whatever you see on Twitter, that's all I know. Um, uh, they got it. They, got I, it locked they, down. they don't tell, they don't tell me too much. It's not one of the benefits of being in sales. They don't, uh, Best Bobs doesn't tell us too much because they don't want us telling people over the phone. Yeah, on, on interviews, yeah. yeah, I understand. Yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're hoping for the best. Um, you know, he, uh, I think the fact of the matter is, you know, he's 19. It's a, it's a tough adjustment. You know, he's working through it. So hopefully, you know, it, it works itself out. Um, but at the same time, like, Joel didn't play for two years. Ben didn't play for one year. It's like Brett Brown got the best had, like doctor medical staff in the league. Basically, that's what. Well, Brett Brown knows how to develop players, um, and he's very aware of you know of them. And I think that's really important for uh, a kid like Markel. So, you know, uh, I think it's going to boil down to you know when can we see him on the floor, and you know how does he mesh well with everybody else because. Ben and Joel are playing some really, really good basketball right now. Oh, for sure. Well, uh -huh. thank you, man. I hope you have a, have a good evening. Thanks. You too, man. Let me know if you need anything else. All righty. Thank you. All right. Yep. Bye-bye. So I thought that went well. I uh, honestly learned a lot more about the uh, sports industry than, than intended. I'm, like I said, I'm in between majors and kind of considering what uh, path I want to go down and learning stuff about how you know entry level jobs uh, how long they are you know maybe like a year to 16 months or you know what positions you can get um, internally and externally and kind of how to move up all were really good information to learn I uh, I love you know sports my whole life um, I'm sure a lot of people do but I've kind of found that this might be my calling to go into the industry whether or not it's like marketing or maybe working directly with the team as in coaching or some sort of manager but I feel that uh, you know a continued dialogue with him would would be good, and learning to uh, you know network and, and build my my broaden my network, I guess you would say, and kind of open open doors for me would be the best place to start. So thank you.